Hey everyone, and welcome to my presentation, um, SL Linux uh, Fun with MySQL and Friends. Uh, so let's get started. So first I'm going to give you a bit overview of who I am. Uh, so my name is Matthias Krebels. I've been living in Ghent in Belgium uh, for over 20 years now almost. Um, I'm a bachelor's degree in computer science, I've been a Linux user and admin for over 20 years. Uh, I've been a PHP developer for the first 10 years of my career and during that time I started also to become the MySQL DBA responsible for uh, our application. Uh, currently it's my, my fourth year in Pythian, I have to update the slide. Uh, I've passed the three year mark, so now in my fourth year. And I'm a, currently I'm a, I'm a lead database consultant, which means that I'm the technical team lead for uh, one of the MySQL teams at Pythian. Uh, and I also have one little boy, well, little, he's growing very fast. You can see us there in the picture a few years ago. But he's grown significantly since then. Um, so a bit about the company that I work for, Pythian is a data-driven company. Um, we help business to use their data to compete and win. Uh, we've been founded in 1997 as an IT services company. Uh, we have all kinds of offerings, uh, uh, especially data centric. Um, so the ag agenda for today, first I'm going to give some uh, introduction what SL Linux is, then we're going to look at MySQL and SL Linux, then I'm going to give an example for Proxy SQL and SL Linux, and then we're going to talk about a little bit about alternatives to this uh, technology, so let's get started. So what is SL Linux? SL Linux stands for Security Enhanced Linux. It's a, um, a Linux kernel security module that provides a mechanism for uh, supporting access control and security policies. Um, it's basically um, a set of kernel modules to enhance security for, for Linux systems. Um, and it's originally developed by the NSA, uh, National Security Ag Agency in the USA, and Red Hat. Um, yeah. So there's the three modes to SL Linux. The first mode is um, enforcing. So that means that SL Linux will enforce all the policies uh, that are set. Um, so if, if something is not allowed, you'll get an error. Uh, permissive means that it uh, will uh, still check all the settings um, and there will be a log file that you can use uh, but it, will, it won't block anything. So permissive is a very good mode uh, to set when you're um, when you're developing an SL Linux um, policy or you're, you're testing something um, and disabled is is then SL Linux is totally disabled. The kernel modules are not uh, not doing anything, so they won't log anything. They won't uh, deny anything. Um, so it's installed by default on any Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux installations or anything that's that's related to that, like CentOS. And it's set to en enforcing by default. So. Um, if you if you install a, a regular uh, rel 7 or 8 or centos 7 or 8 um uh, sl linux is enabled by default and will be enforcing and a wise man once said every time you disable sl linux a kitten dies so yeah usually when you do this on in, in an uh, with an audience uh, you get some smiles but obviously being here alone recording uh it doesn't uh that doesn't work. So. Um, so the truth is about SL Linux, mostly it's the, the compliance or the security teams that will come after you if you start disabling it. They have some audit trails they have to um, they have to guarantee. So if you disable SL Linux, they'll get a notice about that, and they won't get any audit trails anymore for the for the server. And they will come after you. Why did you disable it? Uh, this is not allowed. You should uh, fix your configuration to ensure that you can work with it. By default, there's a deny policy. So anything that you don't specifically allow will be denied. Uh, and we'll come back to that in the examples that, uh, that I've uh, prepared. Uh, a useful tool to install uh, is the policy core utils in Python. 
Uh, this is a package that uh, provides a lot of tools to manage and define your SLinux policies. If you want to go more in-depth, uh, doing more development around it, uh, maybe decompiling some uh, existing policies, uh, things like that, uh, there's a development package also that, that can be interesting. Uh, but uh, the, the, the basic uh, package that you see there um, is, is usually enough to, to get around and to do most of the things that you need to do. So how do you check the status for SL Linux? There's a command uh, SA status um, and that shows you um, the current status of the um, uh, of the of, of the module. So in this case it's enabled oh, it's enabled and it's uh, enforcing and also in the config, uh, config file it's enforcing um, so you can dynamically change the status from uh, get enforce uh, uh, and set enforce. So uh, get enforce, do you get the current mode? Um, and you can do the set enforce permissive, but uh, remember the kittens here. Um, and so um, SL Linux has as users, policies, and contacts. Those are the, the three major components. Um, for users, there's no one-on-one -on -one mapping between Linux, Linux system user and SL Linux user. However, there can be if you configure it that way. Um, but there's an, a tool called SA Manage where you can that you can use to to check all the users. So in the example that I'm showing here, uh, you can see um, SA Manage user L lists all the current users. So I, I've shortened this output a bit because it was too long. And if you do slinux login dash dash l, you get all the login users, and you see what slinux user they're um, connected to. So the default is an unconfined user, but John is a user user. Um, uh, John, uh, we added this John user here um, in this command. So this is where we added John to be the user. Um, so he, he will get all those those privileges. Um, SLN also adds, adds a dash capital Z option to the LS and the PS output. Uh, or commands to check the context of the file or a process. So if you do, for example, an LS LS uh, H dash HL and then capital Z on the MySQL direct, uh, uh, data directory, you'll see that uh, it's owned by the MySQL user and group, uh, as as you would expect. But you can also see that there's a specific user, a uh, specific context that says MySQL DB underscore T that all the files um, in the in the directory have, and even you can see that the socket file here has a different context. So that's uh, a pretty granular def defined. We'll, um, um, we'll we'll take a look into what what cur what's available in. Uh, in MySQL uh, a bit later in this in slides, and also you can see here in the PS output process uh, output uh, if you had the dash capital C and grab the MySQL process, you can see MySQL D safe. Yeah, this is an older uh, installation. I think I used the default uh, MySQL server on the CentOS 7 here, so it's probably even a MariaDB. Uh, and so the context they are user ro role type and level. I've personally never seen levels used, but you can. Um, uh, but that's a bit more in depth, so we're not going to cover that in this uh, talk. Um, as you can see in the in the files and the processes here, um, the user that 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 the files are uh, the SLinux user that the files are are owned by our system user. Uh, and there's a system role and there's an object role um, but the most important part is the type here so the, the matching is done on the type for, for this uh, this installation so let's look at MySQL and SL Linux um, out of the box experiences so that everything works there's a predefined policy um, that you can see if you do SL manage uh, module L you'll see all the modules that are uh, currently uh, available on your system um, and so you grab MySQL and think version the 100 is the version number of the uh, of the module 
and if you then see all the contexts that are there for MySQL, there's um, a lot of them, as we, as we saw in the output from the, uh, the data directory earlier. Um, it's it's fa it's uh, configured fairly granular, or so you can see here um, the socket file that we had was owned by a var run. Um, all the files in varlib MySQL are um, MySQL DBT. So if we go back to this output, you'll see the D MySQL DBT in the MySQL D var run. Um, this is defined by this policy here. Um, so. One of the things that we do for some of our customers, if they request it, is we they, they sometimes request like move the data directory to a separate um, in volume or, or a separate drive or anything. And sometimes that's like mounted on slash data. If their company policy is that all data should live on slash data, then we move uh, the MySQL data directory to slash data slash MySQL. Um, and then what you normally would do is you change uh, the ownership for that directory to MySQL uh, colon MySQL. Um, and if you then do the ls, you'll see that uh, this is uh, a default type currently on that directory. So if we try to start uh, the MariaDB service, which is the default one uh, on this CentOS machine, so I just did uh, a plain CentOS 7 machine with a yum install uh, MySQL server and then you get MariaDB 5.5 which is an ancient version uh, but it is what it is and it won't start so this is where are the tools that we that I talked about earlier the, the Python tools come into play uh, this system is set with SL Linux to enforce uh, that enforces that everything will be uh, blocked if it's not allowed um, but it also logs to a log file. So uh, on CentOS, uh, this log file is var log audit slash audit log. And if you use the audit to allow tool, um, it will print the information that you need in a bit more readable format. So in this case, you see that there's an, uh, uh, an access, an audit log entry uh, that denied a write to uh, by the process MySQLD uh, on the directory named MySQL on the inode yadi yadi yadi, and you see that it, it's uh, the 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 source context is MySQLD underscore t, and the, the target context is default, and so this is not allowed. Um, so what you can do, you can then. Um, try to find the, the right context uh, for the directory. So if you do use uh, essay manage f context l, you can uh, find the varlib mysql context. You see that this is um, uh, the type is mysql d un d underscore db underscore t. And so we will set this uh, context, the same context in the new data directory. So uh, we use data mysql with uh, the wildcard on the, at the back here to allow everything um, and then we do an ls with the capital z and we see it's still default but we did set the context um, because the director is already created you have to apply the context to the folder this was something that i searched for quite some time um, so if you do restore con on that uh, path, you'll see if you do dash v, it shows you what it's doing. So it's resetting the context for uh, data MySQL, and it goes from default underscore t to db and MySQL db underscore t. So if you now do nls, it works. If you now try to start your server, it just works, and it's using the new data directory. Um, so yeah. Um, so let's move to the next thing. Uh, another thing that we sometimes do is change the port for MySQL. Um, there's a number of reasons why you want to do that. And so what, what I did in this case, I just added port equals 3307 to the MySQL D section in the MyCNF file. I tried to restart the same MariaDB service that was just started before and it fails again. Uh, if we do systemctl status, it says uh, 
control process exited, uh, fail state, yadi yadi yadi. Uh, so let's check the error log. Ch check check the, the the system log. So uh, system D tried to start it, um, and then suddenly the process the process exited. And so if you look at the error log, you see that can't start server by non TCP port permission denied. Do you have another server already running on port 3307? I was like, no. Let's check Netstat. Uh, Netstat doesn't show any anything running on 3307. Uh, it doesn't show any MySQL processes running either. Um, so let's uh, continue our search. So if we go back to the same audit log command we used before, um, we see that uh, there's a bind, uh, SLinux denied binding to a port on, on a name. And it gives us an option there. So it says set, set se bool dash p nis enabled one. Uh, so if we set this, it works. So we can just set it to one, start MariaDB, it starts binding, everything works. If we stop it, we turn it off again uh, and we try to restart my, uh, MariaDB, it doesn't work anymore. Um, so what does this setting do? And this allows the process to bind to any port it wants. Um, the compliance team may, may or may not like that level of freedom. And my experience is usually they don't. If they are uh, saying to you that you cannot use... Um, that you, you have to use SL Linux, then they're usually also are pretty serious about not loosening uh, too many things. Uh, so what you can see here, if you do SA manage port dash L and you grab for MySQL, do you see that there's a number of ports listed there that it can use? And what you can then just do is you can just add 3307 to that list of ports. And if you then restart MariaDB, uh, it just works. And it's bound to port 3207. And that brings us then um, to ProxySQL and SL Linux. Uh, normally I would say, do you have any questions, but that doesn't really work here. Um, ProxySQL contexts are not defined by default. So if you start with the uh, uh, SL Linux enabled and enforcing and you um, have ProxySQL running, it will work, but it will be running as an unconfined service and the data directory is uh, located in varlib ProxySQL and so it has a default permissions for varlib. Um, so this works out of the box also, so why should we bother? Um, the problem that I've encountered um, in, in this, in this uh, area was log rotate, it fails. Because log rotate will uh, the, log, the by default the proxy SQL log file is in the data directory, which lives in varlib proxy SQL. Um, but log rotate doesn't have access to varlib. It only has access to var log. So hence it fails. Um, So if I try this manually, uh, log rotate dash fv, uh, the file uh, log rotate dot uh, d proxy sql and dash v for for both, it it just works. Uh, the problem is that in this case, this is running uh, as my root user, and this has more privileges, whereas. Um, Cron, uh, if it runs as cron, it will still run as the root user, but it will have uh, a different kind of privileges set, especially uh, around uh, SL Linux. Um, so let's use the audit log again and see what it has to say about this. Um, so it's denied the rename for this process, um, which is also already what it said, like uh, permission denied for uh, moving the file. Uh, and so when you, um, in this case, what we need to do is we need to create an, uh, a proxy SQL uh, policy. 
to allow this. And so the audit to allow tool that we that we've used in the previous example also has a, a way to generate policies uh, from the audit log. So in this case, um, we do a tail of the of the audit log file. We uh, audit to allow dash m proxy SQL, uh, which is our our module name, and we um, redirect the output to a file. So if we get the file, we see what it will allow. So it will now give us allow log rotate um, uh, log rotate t uh, service uh, to do a varlib t uh, rename. Then you have to do some some steps to uh, check the module, to compile it, and then to load it into your um, into your system. But eventually, it will say like, "Hey, Proxy SQL module version 1.0, which is what we defined here, uh, has been loaded." And so, it's what what I tried then it was and that was still not working but this policy just allows uh for the rename that's the only thing it allows but more operations are are required so how to figure out all this required um the easiest way is you uh set slinux to permissive for a moment you run the process that you will do and then uh, you use the audit to allow um to generate the policy file based on the audit log. You compile and you load, and you, and you can repeat this a few times if it's still not working. You can re it, um, iteratively um, increase everything uh, your uh, your policy will allow. And eventually you set back your SLinks to enforcing, and then uh, when your policy is loaded, it should work. So this is what we ended up with for this log rotate. So initially we only had rename, but it also had to be able to create a file, set some attributes, unlink a file if it had to, if it ended, uh, if it uh, arrived at the end of of the rotation. So it it dropped the oldest file. So that's an unlink operation, and need to be able to write to the files in varlib proxy SQL. And uh, in order to flush our uh, proxy SQL instance to use the the new file you have to connect to the admin port and so uh, this is also something that needed to be allowed and so with this policy if we compile and load that log rotate just works again for um, proxy sql um, on, on a default as a linux machine and so i can show that here um, we have our cron uh, log and we have our var log messages. Um, you see the var log messages sh shows that the systemd is starting a session uh, at the same time uh, that cron is, is launch, launching a session of root and the command it uses is log rotate proxy SQL and when you see in the um, var log messages and the var uh, it, uh, it uh, exits cleanly and what you can see here is that the files are getting rotated. Um, is this the best solution? Maybe not. This is um, some solutions, but it allows log rotate to th this, probably not, because this um, um, this policy will now allow log rotate to rename, delete any file uh, if it has the right file system permissions to do so in varlib. So this is maybe a bit dangerous. What would be better is so we define a, a proxy SQL as a Linux policy where we can make it as granular like MySQL does to uh, um, give each uh, each sort of type of file in the proxy SQL data directory its own type and we make the, the SLinux run as its own SLinux user, um, then we'll be able to um, to make a much more um, clear and and safe uh, policy. But in this case, uh, this was a dedicated proxy SQL machine. This was good enough for what we needed to do, and so we we stopped here. But there's there's definitely room for improvement. 
and then uh, finally we are getting to something to some alternatives for uh, ethel linux um, the most well known is probably app armor which is the default on SUSE and Debian based uh, platforms including Ubuntu um, there's some key difference between Ethel Linux and AppArmor uh, whereas AppArmor is pod based instead of inode uh, for example creating a hard link to a folder or file may change the accessibility of a project uh, there's different methods of uh, administration obviously uh, Ethel Linux has all the SA tool, SA tools, um, or SA, yeah, uh, type of tools. Um, whereas uh, App Armor uh, has its its own uh, set of tools to to administer. Um, and for SL Linux, there's also the option to uh, use a remote policy server, um, where you can centrally manage your policies. Um, then you have some others like uh, GR security and RSBSC. Uh, they're just uh, not so well known. Um, uh, they've been used in some distributions uh, and some um, uh, tools uh, or, or panels that you can use to administer Linux are, are sometimes using uh, GRSec. I've seen, um, but the the two most important ones are uh, SLinux and AppArmor. Um, so thank you. That was it for this presentation. Um, I'm sure that you might have some questions, so feel free to ask. And if not, then I wish you a very pleasant rest of your conference. Thank you. <laughs>